It's hard doing things when you're sick. <laughs> uh, anyways, welcome to the new moon in Leo. We've got a very compelling message today for the Leo new moon, and I'm excited to share it with you. So we've got the Luna Moth card, the Four of Swords, which is the Snowdrop flower, the Cactus Quartz. Let's get started with the Snowdrop card, Four of Swords. Four being this number of stability. I like to think of table legs and building the foundation for that element being the air element because it's swords. And Snowdrop is known to be this flower that is meant to help us through grief by allowing us to grieve. If we feel like we've been stuck, if we've been stagnant and maybe frustrated with our progress moving forward, it may be because we haven't given ourselves the time, the space, the ability to grieve what has to be let go, what has to move out of our life. This particular flower and its essence wants you to acknowledge that it's difficult to move through this world as it is and a lot of the structures in this particular society are really pushing us to just keep going just keep going at all costs don't don't pay attention to yourself don't pay attention to your health your mental health your spiritual health your emotional health it doesn't want us to invest in the time that is necessary to release grief but the only way to release the grief is by going through it, by feeling it, by allowing ourselves the time and space to feel it. And you'd be surprised how quickly we can move through something when we're not pushing it out of the way. We're allowing the sadness to exist in our life. And I'm not saying revel in the sadness. I'm not saying give up and go nihilist. How can you be soft and kind and gentle with yourself while you're allowing these very intense emotions to run through you. It's it's definitely not easy, but ultimately you'll be able to move through whatever you're going through faster. If you feel stagnant, it's because you need to build yourself a foundation of mental wellness, because again, air element. If we're talking about our mental wellness, it's part of this triad of our physical wellness and our emotional wellness. We have to allow our emotions to come out and we have to feel whatever our body wants us to feel or whatever it is feeling in order to get to a point where we could slow down what's going on in our mind. And our mind is this tricky place that can lead us everywhere but where we need to go and we can be distracted by everything except for allowing ourselves to feel the thing that we maybe have been running away from for a long time. Perhaps not just this lifetime, but many lifetimes, perhaps many generations, you know? It all ties into this thing that we're understanding about epigenetics and the fact that something can happen way down the way of our bloodline and that can still physically, emotionally, and mentally affect us in the present moment. And we, we've we seen scientific proof of that. So it's not something that you really like have to work hard to wrap your mind around the fact that things that happen in the past generationally still affect us to this day. There's plenty of proof out there and I would invite you to go check it out. In the meantime, if you're willing to accept that that is just a fact and we're moving through with all of this feeling of generations and generations worth of something that is playing out in our physical life right now, maybe you can be a little more gentle with yourself. Maybe you can allow yourself to feel whatever you need to feel in order to move forward and build the stability in your mind so that you can protect yourself as you move forward, as you're making the changes. Because change doesn't come just because you decide that you understand the lesson. Change comes from practice. We're so often moving on this subconscious wheel, acting out in a muscle memory over and over again, the same patterns, whether that be our patterns based on our childhood and how we were raised or the patterns from generations before us. 
And so if we're constantly on this hamster wheel and we're in complete refusal of allowing ourselves the time and space to just like get it out in whatever way you can. Go to one of those break rooms where you break things or scream into a pillow or cry or just sit in a bath and just contemplate life. I don't know. Whatever, whatever works for you. The main thing is getting in touch with yourself enough to know what it is that you need in order to help you move your healing process forward. And this card just really wants you to be able to quiet your mind a little bit and settle down a little bit so you can kind of feel into a situation. You can allow your body and your emotions to guide you so you're not just being taken wherever which way your mind wants to go. Really allow whatever you're going through to exist and without judgment or expectation of it changing immediately just be like okay this is where I'm at this is what I'm going through and this is how I'm going to move my energy forward just by allowing this to be what it is right now and being okay with that and being gentle with yourself as you move through it. Next we will talk about the cactus quartz. So this is a quartz with little tiny quartzes terminating points coming off of it. And so it speaks to a family of quartz. Again, bringing in this family line, epigenetics, all of these things that really affect us. It is a difficult but necessary task to acknowledge these cycles that we get in, these subconscious patterns, regardless of where they come from, whether it be past life, generational or childhood, there's many different places and levels that these ingrained traumas can just settle into us and keep us going on these patterns. But the Cactus Quartz really wants us to be able to slow ourselves down and understand that if previous generations didn't put in the effort and energy to do the ancestral healing, to heal these cyclical patterns that we've got going on, then it falls on us or it falls on the future generations because we perpetuate it. I think that our generation and the generations to come, I hope, are really ready to do this work. It's affecting us faster than it ever has before. We have a globalized society, we're all connected, and in this connection, we feel the ramifications of things that much faster because we're seeing it all happen real time. That's never happened before in history. It's always been spread out. And now that we're seeing it all happen and we're witnessing it in ourselves, we're more incentivized to make the changes. There's a potential for even faster growth if we're willing to put in the work. We have to cultivate a certain level of forgiveness an understanding of why we're going through what we're going through, why past generations did, so that we can hold space for the potential of something new and beautiful and creating a new world. Literally, whether you have children or not, you're still putting energy forth into the future. And any ancestral healing that's done doesn't just heal yourself, it heals the lines before you. You unlock so much power and energy to help you in your own journey if you're willing to help with this really intense difficult work of unraveling these patterns that are no longer serving us. And sure, they may have done their part before to keep us safe or what have you, but now is the time to find ways to release. And again, that releasing doesn't come just magically because you decide it. It comes from practice. It comes from concerted effort. It's not necessarily easy, but it's definitely worth it. So it's necessary to honor those who came before us, but to also not just reside ourselves to consistently having to learn the same lessons over and over again. It's just very taxing. Ultimately, even though it seems difficult and like a lot of work in order to practice what is necessary in order to change our reality, but the practice of something in order to change is so much easier than the pain of creating and living through the same mistakes and the same patterns and the same blockages over and over and over again. At some point, you're gonna get so tired of doing the same thing and rerunning the same challenges in your life that 
hopefully you'll have incentive to want to move that energy forward. Again, not saying it's easy, just saying it's necessary. And there are ancestors, guides, guardians for your highest good that are watching out for you, that are your team. They're literally your team. They're with you all the time. And before you even need to start working with any deities or any, any lineages like that, get in good with your ancestors. Get in good with the whole team that is with you, has always been with you, and wants your highest good in this lifetime. And I promise promise you, if you get in good with them, then you don't have to feel like you're this one little human that has to make all the choices and all the decisions and change the world. You understand that you're working with a team to intuitively guide you where you're supposed to go and to the healing that you're supposed to do. And you know when something's right for you and when something's not right for you. And if you don't know, it's only because you haven't taken the time to slow down and get grounded. This is the thing that fools us about capitalism capitalism and our colonial society. We're always looking for the quick fix. We're looking for what's going to get us the biggest gain, the fastest, be damned with whoever we have to step on in order to get there. And that is not a long-term solution. That is a very short-term solution that ultimately doesn't serve anybody. It only serves us in the short term. That's the definition of boom and bust society. We don't have the resources to do that anymore. We have over 7 billion, maybe almost 8 billion people on this earth right now. And we all have ancestral lineages. We all have ancestral healing to do. We all have patterns that we have to unlock ourselves from because we're spending 90% of our time subconsciously acting and only 10% consciously acting, we can shift that narrative. But it requires practice. It requires work on our end. It requires giving ourselves space and time to heal and heal things that we didn't even go through. We got to heal things for other people. And then this last card, the Luna Moth card. So it's this beautiful light green, which is a heart energy center and the crown energy center. So speaking to this connection between the rhythm of our lives, because the heart is the electromagnetic center. It's, it's really telling us constantly what we are repelled from and what we are attracted to. It's setting the energetic pace of the auric fields around us. And it's giving us our little rhythm, the, the rhythm of the blood moving through our body, the rhythm of its beat, the rhythm of how we're connecting to the earth crown, which is where our we're getting our messages from our spirit, our guides, whoever's working with us, whoever we're working with actively. Moths and butterflies have this similar symbolism of transformation and transmutation, but moths are a nocturnal animal, so that's even more towards the subconscious conscious side of things and luna moths are this beautiful light green color and they're this ethereal being that lives in the night and they really speak to our ability to divine ourselves through whatever is going on right now to really tap in to our own personal psychic natures. Some people are naturally gifted and more easily tapped in to their own psychic nature, whether that be clairaudience, clairvoyance, claircognizance, clairsentience. There's so many different ways that our senses can relay intuitive messages. The Luna Moth really wants us to understand that we all have have access to our own intuitive psychic impulses and it's like a muscle that is completely atrophied because our society at least if you live in this society has not encouraged us to strengthen this particular muscle in fact it's discouraged us and told us that it's fake and there's no way that you could ever be tapped in and that does us a huge disservice because we are all psychic intuitive beings and we all have an opportunity to flex these muscles and there's so much information out there and you can start to meditate and see which psychic muscle is maybe your strength but don't just sit in that strength work on the other ones too like if you have a second of time even if you don't if you don't have time to go studying clairaudience claircognizance claircognizance 
sentience, all of these things, that's okay. You can still listen. You can still find a way to quiet down your mind, your emotions, your body, just so that you can be in the moment and be open to intuitive hits and be open to when you just walk around, what are you seeing? What is coming to you? That is important because what you notice is important. That is the message for you. Moths are this extreme mode of transformation. They're really moving through this darkness through our subconscious realm to be able to intuitively see what's going on. Again, I am sure you know what patterns that you keep on a cycle of that are not doing you any good. I'm sure that you know what doesn't feel right to you and intuitively you can understand where you should be and where you shouldn't be. And Sure, it can be harder to hear those messages when you're not grounded and you're not taking a lot of time for yourself so that you can know what your body and your emotions and your mind are telling you, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible. It doesn't mean that you can't get there. And this time right now, especially with all three of these cards, it's speaking to large transformation. And I would challenge you to really look at like, what are you, what are you going through right now? Me? I'm not feeling well. I'm sick. I haven't been sick for two and a half years and now I'm sick and I'm like okay <laughs> So now I have to remind myself, you know, sometimes you have to keep moving forward even if you're not feeling well. And sometimes you have to stop everything because you're not feeling well. And you have to weigh these things out for yourself in order for you to transform the long term. And so really just be open to whatever is going on with you right now. Understand that probably whatever is going on with you right now is part of a larger story, not just just your own. It's part of the whole ancestral work that you're doing. And just allow yourself to be in whatever state you're in. I'm just here, <laughs> just showing up to the best of my ability because this is what I committed myself to because this is important to me. And, and I think it is helpful for other people too. And so whatever it is that you need to commit yourself to in order to grow and develop as a well-rounded whole being is worthy of putting that practice and energy into, I promise you. And this Leo new moon is really giving us the power to say, hey, wherever you're at, that's okay. Just be there and shine your light regardless. Just allow yourself to plant the seeds that you want to see in the world as we move through this Leo season. And with that, I'll catch you in the full moon.